Hour. Damn, son, where'd you find this? This, this, this should be played at high volume, preferably in a residential area. Listen to me, Randy. It doesn't matter what you look like on the outside, whether you're white or black or Sasquatch even. As long as you follow your dream, no matter how crazy or against the law it is. Except for Sasquatch. If you're Sasquatch, the rules are different. Forget it, Meatwad. I'm a circus freak. That's all I'll ever be. Whatever. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Khloe Kardashian is allegedly upset over ex Tristan Thompson's cheating after allegations that he fathered a child with another woman surfaced last week. Let's get into it. She sounds so sad, like, oh, let's let's get into it. Poor Chloe, even though she keeps going back to a man that's cheated on her with every NBA side chick ever. Not defending Tristan Thompson. He's a deadbeat piece of garbage, but oh my god, Chloe needs more self worth. I'm going to keep going back to him. He won't cheat this time. It turns out Khloe Kardashian has some understandably hard feelings towards ex Tristan Thompson. It's really not that understandable at all. He's cheated on you over and over again. It's very hard to figure out. If my girl cheated on me. Bye bye. See ya. I'll have to figure out the apartment arrangements. Bye bye. -bye. Good riddance. After bombshell news that he cheated on her with his personal trainer, Marley Nichols. Yeah, you always got to watch out for someone in Marley. Uh, they're going to really give it up easy. And you got to watch out for personal trainers. Surfaced on the internet earlier this month. Since the early days of their relationship, Chloe and Tristan's whirlwind romance has always had plenty of ups and downs. The Have there been any ups? I mean, I'm not trying to be negative. But, like, what was an up part of the relationship? He's obviously been cheating since day one. Like, I, I want to know. 856-49-HOPPY. It's 856-494-6773. Was there a moment between Thompson and Chloe that you're like, oh, they're just a match made in heaven? The couple first met back in 2016 and welcomed their daughter, True, in 2018. And, and that was around the last time Thompson was good in 2016. Man, she ruined him. And while things appeared to be going great early in their relationship, unfortunately, their honeymoon phase didn't last long. They had a honeymoon phase? Tristan was caught cheating on Chloe with multiple women throughout her pregnancy. <laughs> But I want to take you back. And then he was caught kissing Kylie Jenner's ex-best friend, Jordan Woods. Oh, yeah, that was the best part. Was it was reported that they hooked up and they were implying that Jordan Woods gave Thompson head, which is fine. It's consensual. But then Jordan Woods was like, oh, I didn't give him head or anything. I just kissed him. So then the media ran with that. It's sort of like the media kissing Alec Baldwin's ass. They don't want to lose the person as a source, so they go with what the celebrity says. But we know that she gave him a hummer or two. Chloe and Tristan's romance remained on and off in the following years, but Tristan's latest cheating scandal might have just been the last straw for Chloe. Ah, uh, the last one should have been the first time he cheated. According to court documents obtained by People, Marilee is suing Tristan for child support and other pregnancy-related fees. I wonder what the vibe's going to be like when Chloe and Marley meet. I always wonder what the mindset is of being a side chick. It's a topic nobody wants to talk about, but a lot of people that I'm surprised over the years actually ended up having side chicks. Like you always hear about the person that you don't think would cheat and you find out they have a ton of side chicks. Like obviously it's a scumbag move for the man and he's ditching his family, but like they kind of get away with it. Side chicks, it's like, oh, I'm hot. I'm ruining a marriage. After she alleged that they had, in fact, conceived a child together in March. Ah, uh, who wasn't in March? Seems like everyone's having kids now. To make matters. Everyone was a slut in March. Everyone I know is having a kid now. Man, we were just getting laid in March. 
alleged that they had in fact conceived a child together in March. Yeah. To make matters worse, Tristan confessed to having sex with Marilee on at least one occasion. I love, uh, well, let me go back. According to the document. So he had sex with her at least once, according to the documents. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I only banged you there one time. I, I love when these people get caught and then they try to make it minimal. They're like, no, I, I only cheated on you once with that amazingly tight. During a time when Tristan and Chloe were reportedly doing well in their relationship. <laughs> I guess they weren't doing well then. And according to a new statement from a Kardashian insider, Chloe has had a pretty rough time handling the news. Stop going back to him, dummy. You're pretty. You can get another guy or whatever. I don't know. You sound like a bundle of fun. Definitely a lot of confidence. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour will be right back. Oh, yeah. This following segment was brought to you by the Tampa Bay Hot Sauce Company at TampaBayHotSauce.com. When I tell you that they are the best in the Bay, I am a man of my words. Go to TampaBayHotSauce.com and there you can see all the locations in Florida of where you can get their product in person. But if you don't live in Florida, don't worry. Don't have a panic attack even though you're kind of missing out. You can order online at TampaBayHotSauce.com. And add them on Instagram at Tampa Bay Hot Sauce at Ryan Hoppy Radio. Let us know what you cook up. Happy hour. Happy hour. Please don't be offended. He's sorry in advance. Someone hooked me up with a flame. I'm having a nut fit. Uh, light him up. Meet what? Here. Encourage him in his habit. That's a good smoker. When did you start smoking? This morning. I rose my wrist and I'm going to tear up. We shall acquire some wine on the way to the mall. And then you can get tore up. And pass out in the hot sun. That's my boss. I don't think Meatwad should be hanging around with these moon people. Watch out. Hoppy is about to rant. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. The other stations are tuned in too. Oh yeah, Mike was not on. 856-49 Hoppy. It's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio and you can always email me. Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. You can also listen on Quad Pod at QODPOD.com slash Ryan Hoppy and Z Radio Live every Thursday. At 5 p.m. East Coast time, 4 p.m. Central. We have so much to get into. I saw this headline here, <laughs> and it cracked me up. See, so do you ever, like, feel empathy towards a celebrity where you hate every single part about them, and you know they're an asshole, even though they're portraying themselves as a good guy, but other people around you think he's a good person? And you kind of just sit back in your chair like I'm doing right now. And you can't see it, but I'm just letting you know to paint the picture. You just sit back in your chair and you're like, oh, I'll let you figure out that John Mulaney's a fucking asshole. I remember the beginning of my relationship with my girlfriend. That was like right when he released a Netflix special. And this is not a shot of her because she knew he was a douche. But she like showed me his comedy. And like everybody in the audience knew Everybody in the audience seemed to not know that he was a douche and they all thought he was relatable. And I don't know if it's because I'm a dude and I just don't like other dudes, but uh, John Mulaney just always had really bad vibes. No, it's not because he's an addict because some of the nicest people are addicts. Being an addict, I mean, 
I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't go, oh, Ryan, you don't like him because he has a drinking problem. I don't like him because there's not a genuine bone in his body. His comedy's all right, but I, he's that dude at the bar that, like, hits on your girl, and then you go, hey, dude, I uh, am dating her. And he's like, oh, you could do better. And then you punch him in the face and you get banned from that bar. He's that dude. He quite possibly might be one of the most unlikable dudes I've ever seen in comedy. Because there's not a genuine bone in his body. At least Pete Davidson is like, oh, I got personality disorders and I never, uh, well, I guess never wanting to get married would be false because he was engaged to Ariana. But you know what I'm saying? Like, in, So that was a bad example. But in his comedy, Pete Davidson's very genuine about being fucked up from his dad dying. In a, like, you feel like you can relate to that maniac. With John Mulaney, it's just very manufactured. It's like, <laughs> him and uh, Jimmy Fallon should run a train sometime. Uh, oh, of course, John Mulaney was on SNL. Saturday Night Live alumni John Mulaney is hitting the road for a new tour. Event promoter Live Nation, I wonder if they'll get sued for this, announced on December 6th that the comedian would embark on a 33-city tour, which would kick off at Mohegan Sun in Wilkes, in Wilkes Bar, Pennsylvania. Oh, that's where all the comedians, you know, dream doing comedy. Ah, oh, forget about when that sexist hack known as uh, Andrew Dice Clay. Man, I almost drew a blank there. Oh, thank God I didn't. That would have been bad radio. Now I'm addressing it, so it's even worse radio. Uh, I remember when uh, Andrew Dice Clay, I wasn't alive, but 30 years ago, he sold out Madison Square Garden. Ah, who wants to achieve that success when you can begin your tour in Wilkes Bar, Pennsylvania? That's the hot spot of comedy. Oh, I bet they got a really good pizza place there. <laughs> This is the 39-year-old, his first tour since it was announced he entered drug rehab last year, is divorcing his wife and was expecting a baby with 41-year-old girlfriend Olivia Munn. It's quite the sentence there. Goes to rehab, divorces his wife, and was expecting a baby with 41-year-old girlfriend Olivia Munn, who was having a crisis. Okay, here's my thing. So he gets with Olivia Munn after, like, being married. And you know when there's obvious crossover of the celebrity beginning to cheat with the side chick and the relationship never works with the side chick. It's like Miley Cyrus and Caitlin Carter when she broke up with uh, Liam. And like right when she broke up with Liam, she began seeing Caitlin and then the media reports it as, well, it was right after she left Liam. She wasn't hooking up with her at all while married. And you kind of go, hmm, there's a little bit of a crossover. Like she quickly got into a relationship right after getting a divorce. It's the same thing with John Mulaney. In the way, it's the same as this. He goes from being married to expecting a baby with Olivia Munn. Unless you didn't pull out the first night, which it sounds like he didn't. I mean, literally, to go from being married to... They're having a baby with a 41-year-old Olivia Munn. I mean, first of all, Olivia Munn is trash for dating a married man. She's got the, she's got the uh, credibility of a dead rat. And I say that about both sexes. It's not me being sexist because if a man cheats, a man cheats. If a woman cheats, a woman cheats. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't matter. But, like, celebrities are just such sociopaths. Like, we're just going to ruin marriages and bang each other. Oh, God. And, like, Olivia Munn's beautiful, but she just has that look of, like, bleh. You know what I mean? Like, she's okay. I'm not saying I don't think she's hot, but, like, she's like the girl that you message on Tinder, and you're like, hey, how's it going, Olivia? And she's like, I'm good. And then you just unmatch with her. You're like, yeah, you have such a personality. Oh, you really carry a conversation well. God, can you imagine how pretentious? I don't want to make fun of a future kid. I don't know why my mic went like that and I went off mic. But could you imagine if John Mulaney and Olivia Munn, they're going to have a kid. So I guess it's not uh, like, can you imagine? It's going to happen. Because when you say, can you imagine? It's not happening yet. But what I'm saying is with Olivia Munn and John Mulaney, that is going to be the most spoiled, arrogant, douchey kid ever. And I hate saying that about kids, but it's what they're going to produce. 
There's nothing likable about him. Yuck. And it has nothing to do with like I'm threatened by him or bothered by him because he has to look himself in the mirror every day. And I'm sure he avoids that mirror like no other. Like back when I hated myself and I would talk shit about other people on that, I couldn't look myself in the mirror. I legitimately could not look myself in a mirror. And now it's not that I love myself, but I'm able to look at myself in the mirror and assess myself. John Mulaney is a guy who can now look himself in the mirror. Olivia Munn could look herself in the mirror and go, I look like every other chick in Los Angeles and I'm no different than any of them. Happy hour. Happy hour. Oh, wow, you're hot. I can't find that anywhere. Hot chicks, Olivia Munn? Oh, there's no website that has an access of anything you want. Happy Hour will be right back. Oh, yeah. This following segment was brought to you by FitsAgeFitness.com. Fit underscore Sage underscore Fitness on Instagram. When I tell you that Devin Prasad is the best in the Bay, I am a man of my words. I would not lie to you. You can do virtual workouts if you don't live in Florida, but you got to make it happen, Captain. And how you do that is you go to fitsagefitness.com and you tell them I sent you. Happy hour. Happy hour. He never holds back and he speaks his mind. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. Doctors say the life expectancy of the average man is now 76.2 years. <gasps> 76.2 but i'm already 38.1 i've wasted half my life half my life gone and i'm only guaranteed 38 more years ladies and gentlemen here it is the most listened to radio show on the planet even the other stations are tuned in too hour will be right back but i'm right here and i just pressed the wrong button yo what's up baby let's go let's act like that never happened 856 49 hoppy 856 494 you can tweet at me at ryan hoppy radio you can always email me ryan hoppy radio at gmail.com oh yeah so I haven't seen a shrink recently the last five weeks. And my mental health has never been better. Seeing somebody and speaking out loud your problems and realizing that you're insane for thinking your problems are really that bad is very therapeutic. My shrink looks at me like I'm a maniac. Like I scream out all these problems and he's just like, he's very good at making me feel like it's not that important. But you know what? Maybe I'm going about the improvement of my mental health the wrong way. Maybe I shouldn't listen to the experts that diagnose me with clonopin for my anxiety. Maybe I shouldn't go with my shrink that's helped me in the last five weeks. Because you know who I think is the authority on all things mental health? The rich and elite. Because they totally can relate to us average Joe and Janes. Get the fuck out of here. Oh, that, that was spicy. Usually I say, get the hell out of here, but I said, get the fuck out of here. It's almost like I'm in a YOLO mode. I should probably not swear. If this was on FM radio, I wouldn't swear, but my bad. Okay, this is from the Daily Mail. They just went down a weird path. Uh, it says here, end quote, furious Prince Harry says quitting work can be good for your mental health, and many people around the world are in jobs that don't bring them joy. You know what? I get that every human being should be allowed to express their opinion. I get that every human being can say what they want. But honestly, millionaires need to shut up. 
I get that you have golden plated problems. I get that you have things that are annoying, like dealing with the marriage and the kids. I get that just because you have money, your problems aren't going anywhere. But let's just be real here, millionaires. Let's just be real for a second. Let's keep it 100. You don't have as many problems as poor and middle-class people. You have problems and you want to let us know that you have problems so you can relate, but you don't have as many problems. Just like how we don't have as much money as you, we here's how it trades off. You have more money than us and us poor people, we have something more than you and that's problems. It's just a matter of fact. Because Prince Harry is probably not working that hard at whatever he does so he's able to go, oh, I'm not going to do something for a month and then hangs out with Meghan Markle and makes a podcast for two episodes. They made two episodes of a podcast. And let me check this because I don't want to spread fake news. It was Archwell Audio. And that was my British accent. And uh, they did like two episodes and they got paid like 800000 Spotify is just throwing out money, dude. It's insane. Let me see if they've done a podcast since I last spoke. Oh, the 2020 holiday special. Yeah. Um, that was good. See, that's the hard work I'm talking about. They literally get paid $750,000. I bet I think it was even more. I think I'm just in denial about how much they were paid, so I keep saying 750,000, but they were paid a lot of money to do this Archwell audio podcast and they did two episodes. So Prince Harry, of course, he's going to say, quit your job. You quit on your podcast. You quit on your family. You're a quitter. You're a wimp. Not saying your family doesn't deserve to be quit on. Like they don't seem like good people, but don't try to relate to us. Just admit that you can't relate because poor and middle-class people go, I can't relate to millionaires, but then millionaires feel weird. So they try to relate to us. You can't relate. And that's fine that you can't relate. Get out of here. Prince Harry says that with self-awareness comes the need for change. I agree. I make 15,000 a year in radio. I don't complain because I love every second of my job. But oh boy, I would love the need for change, which I'm going to manifest is going to happen. That hobby in the morning takes over a radio market. I'm sending out my work. It's being real. So, of course, something's going to change. But this quote of self-awareness comes the need for change. It's like Prince Harry, because he's had everything given to him. He thinks you can just change something because he has the access to change it. I want to make more money in radio. I want to have a full-time show. It takes years to get your big break. Even Gary V, who's 45 years old, I'm, I'm indifferent about Gary V. Some of it's insufferable, some of it's spot on. But the main thing is there's no such thing as an overnight sensation. Unless you're the royal family. He doesn't say that part, but Gary V is always like, I'm not an overnight sensation. I worked hard at it. That's why I really did Gary V is because he grew up poor and now he's rich and I want to follow that same mantra but these assholes that grow up with money the need for change Prince Harry tell me where I find the jobs you got inflation we have a president that's asleep all the time uh, we have corporations that are laying people off and don't want to pay a minimum wage because of uh, health benefits where's this change Prince Harry shut up God He wants to be an advocate for mental health. And he said, in quotes, beginning of the mental health awakening. Well, honestly, dude, this headline didn't really help out my mental health. Granted, I don't want to be a part of your dumb family. I don't want your dumb access to things because you guys cover up your dumb pedophile uncle. And your marriage seems like a sham. And, oh, Meghan Markle never heard of you. The most famous dude ever. She's like, I didn't know who he was when I casually went up to him at the bar. Shut up. All of them. I mean, really, they're all ass wipes. Because nobody's different than any of us. 
we're all going into the ground or we're getting cremated someday. Like there's nothing different about us. You know what I mean? We all have the same reaction to pain. We, you know, like we all go through the same things as humans, but these asshole millionaires and these celebrities that I roast on this show, cause that's what I want to do. I want to be an, an advocate for roasting these assholes that the media never exposes. The media kisses their ass. I want to be the outlet that tells it like it is. And that's what I fight for every day. I record this show and I'm being serious. They think that they're just above us cause they have money, but they could be dead tomorrow. And you can't take that money with you unless there might be an afterlife. Can't. And then you just keep babbling. Millionaires keep going. I can relate to you. I can. You can't. You cannot relate to me. You can't. I'm sorry. And that's not a bad thing that you can't relate to us. Enjoy your nice house. What are you self-conscious about? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, what are you trying to prove? I can't relate to LeBron. He's one of the greatest basketball players ever. I can't dribble a ball. And even though LeBron can be a jackass sometimes, I love watching him play because, A, he's a phenomenal player that will never have, like, again, is a once, not just a lifetime, a once in the life of our planet, a planet time, whatever, because I don't know what that means, but you know what I'm saying? Like in other lifetimes, there aren't going to be other players like him. So saying that LeBron is a once in a lifetime player is not saying enough about how good LeBron is, but he's been a real asshole lately and just been really annoying, like grabbing his crotch and that and he's just being weird. He's not being the same classy self he is. But I like that he doesn't try to relate to us and go like, oh, I'm like you guys. I'm like you guys. He's more genuine than Prince Harry. I don't know, dude. I, I just can't take it. And then the media just runs with it. And they can't relate because they're millionaires reporting about the other millionaires. <sighs> don't get mad, Ryan. Don't get mad, Ryan. And then the other funny thing is how we rate success. So this weekend I got to do, I don't know what it, you would call it, but Mike Olivero graciously let me host the Mike O radio show. And I had David Seth Cohen, a movie director of Finding Sandler. And I had the sports legend Al Keck from Tampa Bay on. And then I talked for an hour to a bunch of listeners. It was a dream come true. I really hope it turns into something. I believe I could be the biggest show in any town. And I'm not just saying that. I know I can. But I was getting blown up on social media. It was amazing. No hate. Maybe one comment about how I'm hyper, which is true. But like everybody was being cool. So on Sunday, I was talking about that people think my girlfriend is out of my league when she's not because we're both nerds. And I love her more than anything. But here's what I'm saying. And this is not small D energy. This is not me being bothered by the comment. I just think this is funny. So you know when you get a psychotic message in a DM and it's perfectly written? Like I'm not saying you shouldn't try to have good grammar in a DM, but if you're sending me a paragraph in a DM, you're kind of a weird person. Paragraphs are for emails and an important text, like a boss texting you. So this listener messages me. It's like, hey, I just want to say I'm becoming a fan of you because like he cared about what other people thought about me a year ago. So now that it's kind of cool to like me, now he likes me. So first of all, he's so genuine. And he goes, I can relate to you about having a really hot girlfriend. And he shows me a picture of his girlfriend. She's really pretty. And I'm not trying to judge her looks, but he was like a nerd. And she was like a nerd. I was like, she's a gorgeous girl but you guys look like you're meant for each other. The whole point of why everyone tries to rip into my relationship with my girlfriend is because she's a supermodel and I used to be the goofball on the radio so people can't fathom that she's with me, but they don't see what we're like behind closed doors. So this dude sends me a picture and is like, 
I could totally, he sends me a picture of him and his girl, like a selfie on the beach. He's like, I could totally relate to you about having a girl out of my league. I'm like, I don't know, man. looks like you guys are in the same league. I didn't say that. I didn't even reply. And this is what really annoyed me. He's like, well, I think someday you could be the next Howard. I don't know if you'll have the same success as him and if that's even possible. And I didn't even read the rest. I was like, don't even try to compliment me. And then be passive aggressive. Oh, the, the success. There's no money in radio. Howard's a once in a lifetime talent. And I kind of get what the listener was saying when he said I might not like I might not be like Howard. But you're not going to be like any other human. But it felt like when he was saying, I'm not going to be like Howard, it felt like he was saying you're not going to have the money or success. It's just weird, man. People are weird, bro. Like, I don't get it, dude. I, I, some of these messages I get from listeners, I'm so flattered that somebody wants to reach out. You know what I mean? Like, it's really cool that I have that impact, but some of the things people message me, I'm like, okay. Like, I'm fascinated, not that they thought it, not that it's a good or a bad idea with some of these messages I get, but they think it's like necessary to add me on social media and then send it. I'm like, wow, I made that much of an impact that they want to send a passive aggressive message. Where they project about their own insecurities. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour will be right back. <sighs> the following segment was brought to you by Rich Keeley Master Barbershop. Rich Keeley is the man. RichKBarber.com. He is at Salon Loft. Over on Kennedy Boulevard, right next door to McDonald's. Sign up for an appointment at richkbarber.com and tell them I sent you. Happy hour. Happy hour. Watch out. Hoppy is about to rant. I'd like a uh, $9,000 prostitute, please. Oh, do you have nine $1,000 ones? Yeah, good, and if you got an albino, send her up too. In like 20 minutes, I'm gonna be asleep, so get him up here. I had like half a bottle of melatonin, six beers, this whole f-ing bucket of chicken. Oh, the Sandman is coming. Call Hoppy now. 856 49 Hoppy. Tweet at him at Ryan Hoppy Radio. Well, it was good while it lasted, I guess. But, Sheriff, the glory hole is the pride and joy of Dougal County. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet that the other stations are tuned in to. Chloe Kardashian comes to Kylie Jenner and Travis Scott's defense. Maybe that's why you can't find a man that's good for you is because you think it's worthy to defend a piece of garbage like Travis Scott and Kylie Jenner. Maybe that's why you can't attract anybody is because you got bad definition of character. Kylie and Travis have been keeping a low profile since the rapper's tragic Astro World Festival incident in November. Yeah, that was kind of a bad thing. Which left 10 concert goers dead and hundreds of others injured. Yeah. Oh, man. I can't believe Travis has that many fans. Like, I'm not hating on Travis. This is not like projection. But I truly did not believe and did not know that that many people like Travis. I was like, wow. In the wake of the tragedy, the couple reportedly agreed to scrap a W Magazine cover shoot. Oh, no. No. I was so looking forward to seeing their photoshopped picture. No. This is why Kim Kardashian is the goat. 
It's the rest of these girls. And I'm not saying that if you release a porn that you're better than them. Oh, it got leaked and then they got a nice paycheck from Vivid Entertainment. Totally not sketchy. But what I'm saying is Kylie, Chloe, Courtney, Kendall doesn't really count because she's very private. But all of them show off their body. I hope this is not this does not come off sexist. But what I'm saying is it's like cool. You're on the cover of a magazine. At least Kim was expressing her body where you don't see many celebrities having sex, so it's a fun tape to watch, but this idea that we're going to be affected because Kylie, her photo shoot, which looks like every photo shoot ever because she has the personality of a, I don't know, cricket, makes no sense. <laughs> Do not know why I thought of it being like a cricket. Honestly, this cricket right now, I don't know why I keep going to crickets, is saying smarter things than she ever has. That's a good point, Cricket. No, we've solved world hunger. But for now, part of their interview and some of the images appear to have leaked online. Yeah. Because it's a leak. Oh, they apparently leaked. Oh, that's how you get the pictures out. You claim you're doing a service by not having the magazine re the magazine released, but you send the photos to TMZ. Oh, you guys are such great people full of integrity we won't be showing you but the pictures show kylie travis and their three-year-old daughter stormy webster posing together as a family ah uh, seems like a wonderful family there and one tiktok user shared an excerpt from the alleged copy reading quote travis and kylie seemed very comfortable under the sheets yeah we know but even though they will soon have two children together, they are not a couple and haven't been for two years. Yeah, he just doesn't know how to pull out. And here's my thing about the pull out method. I don't know why, like, not that everyone's against it. But I love when you talk to a dude who knocks up a girl and then becomes like a deadbeat. Or you talk to a dude that knocks up a girl and is at first mad that the girl gets pregnant but then falls in love with the kid but this is all about accidental pregnancies where the dude doesn't want to have it because there might be accidental pregnancies where the dude wants it so those examples don't matter but this only goes with accidental pregnancies where the dude wants it you control your own destiny bro it's your penis having intercourse with the vagina you can eat my neighbors must, must think I'm a maniac. You can pull out. You control your destiny. And this thing that I hear dudes say, where I, they go, oh, but it feels so much better completing the task. Okay. And you know what's better? Not having kids when you're not ready. I don't get it. And sure, it feels wonderful. Done it like twice. My ex. Oh, yeah. And then she was always like, I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant. We're breaking up at the target. I'm doing me, brain. But it doesn't even feel like that good. You know what? I, like, it feels wonderful. It's the greatest feeling ever, but it only feels good while it's happening. Like the philosopher Lil Wayne says, which I'll get to him later. The philosopher known as Lil Easy says, first you come, then you come to your senses. Like, afterwards, I'm like, am I going to be a father? It's not a good feeling. So when I hear all these dudes go, oh, I, I didn't mean to do it. What? You have no control over your body that you can just pull out? Like, it's not that good. It's amazing. It's the greatest thing ever, but it's not that good. I don't know if that makes sense. One of the TikTok commenters claimed their friend worked on the magazine shoot and alleged the Kylie Cosmetics founder and the Grammy winner didn't speak to each other the whole time. Oh, that sounds good. I imagine they don't even speak to each other during sex. You know when you like open up one of those like Pornhub videos and um, it's like a homemade tape and you can tell they're like a married couple because they're bored and she's not acting. 
and the girl's just getting banged in the doggy position. And she's like, <laughs> it sounds like she's jogging on a treadmill. <laughs> That's what I imagine it being like with Travis. And then he's just thinking about the side chick that really gave him some afternoon delight. Well, Coco wasn't feeling that and slid into the comments of the post to add, quote, wow, I don't know why this magazine would write this, but they are very much a couple. E.T. Uh, they got such morals and integrity. He has reached out to W for comment. Uh, of course, this is a complicated time for the couple who is currently expecting their second child together. Following the November Astroworld tragedy, a $2 billion lawsuit was filed on behalf of the 280 victims of the fatal event. And another 120 victims have contacted the lawyers who filed the suit, seeking representation for their injuries and damages. Yeah. <sighs> So we're going to go to the official TMZ video about this. This is fascinating. So Travis Scott has come out denying the allegations that he is in any way responsible for the Astro World tragedy. Yeah, there's a bunch of peasants that died while I was acting all demonic. I'm Travis Scott. I'm a shitty rapper with a lot of money and got famous because some producer hacked into SoundCloud. So my numbers in the beginning were actually fake. I am better than you, and I should not be charged at all because I'm an elitist creep. It's filed what's called here a general denial in one of the lawsuits, and all that is- Yeah, he is in denial. Is, is basically one sentence long that says, I deny all the allegations. You don't get into the specifics of how the complaint was laid out. You just say, look, you'll find out all the bases for my denial after we get into the litigation. For now, just know I deny everything. And yeah, it's called getting a lawyer throw out the lawsuit I want out. And the Twitter verses exploded. A lot of people really criticizing him because they feel it was sort of a callous kind of response to this. He's having to do this though. I'm not defending Travis. His only good song is Antidote. It's literally what it sounds like. Popping pills is all we know. And then I wonder why I can't get an erection from popping all these pills. What I'm, <laughs> that was weird. What I'm saying is this. Do I like Travis Scott? No. Do I dig Travis Scott? No. Do I think he's talented? No. But of course he's going to deny it. Of course he's not going to go along with it. You're not going to go in the beginning of all of this litigation. This is me trying to act like a lawyer and go, hey, I did it. Take all my money. But Derek, this is just the way things go. This is, you know, lawsuits have been filed against him seeking billions and billions of dollars. He's. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm sure he's totally worth that. Chris Kardashian's like, where's the checkbook? I already covered up the other side check this week. Got him out of defense. The first stage in these defenses is to file a general denial. Yeah. I'm all right. So he's in denial. And aren't we all? Mine's just not worth a billion dollars. Not the hour. Happy hour. Happy hour will be right back. This following segment was brought to you by Amir Academy of Martial Arts at AmirAcademy.com, 2700 22nd Street North, and that's in St. Petersburg. Search up Amir Academy on Instagram. When I tell you that he is the best in the Bay, I would not lie to you. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 6 p.m. Happy hour. Happy hour. Damn, son, where'd you find this? Call Hoppy now. 856-49-HOPPY. Tweet at him at Ryan Hoppy Radio. What are you looking at? Loser! You're a loser! Are you feeling sorry for yourself? Well, you should be, because you are dirt! You make me sick, you big baby! Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Travis Barker is staying loud and proud when it comes to his signature body art. Oh, that means he's insecure. 
The- when when you have to get your whole body tattooed and then explain it, you are in denial. Travis Barker is staying loud and proud when it comes to his signature body art. Yes. The rocker fired back at an Instagram troll who criticized his tattoo collection this week. That's sad. I just delete comments and act like they don't exist. I get occasional hate. I don't get that much hate. But I'm just saying, like, when you reply, you give them attention. But when you either block it or if you just give it a like, it goes away. Travis should have just given it a like. But that's him projecting that he's insecure. Travis posed shirtless for recent photos taken by frequent collaborator Daniel Rojas. Oh, he's so edgy the way he posed with his shirt off. Watch out! Travis Scott. Nah, nah, nah. Travis Barker gets so confusing. Even though they're very different. Travis Barker, so edgy and wild. He's got tattoos. Huh? And he's got a chain around his neck that looks like the chain around a fence. Yeah, he's crazy and wild. Frequent collaborator Daniel Rojas. You never know what he's going to do. Travis Barker is unhinged with his midlife crisis. In this week, Travis posed shirtless for recent photos taken by frequent collaborator Daniel Rojas. And one follower couldn't help chiming in on the extensive designs covering Travis's entire torso, neck, and skull. Right. Do you hear how sad that sentence is? One user commented. It wasn't like Chris commented, Chris Kardashian. Who else would I be talking about? Chris Tucker. It wasn't like Kim Kardashian commented. It was some loser. And you let him win? Writing. The tattoos really look ridiculous, Travis. Yeah. When you get older, you are going to regret it. I think he already does. He's responding to you. And then why is Access Hollywood blocking off this? They're like blurring out the username and picture. Oh my God. Does the celebrity news media kiss their ass? The 46-year-old didn't hold back when sharing his disagreement, explaining why he's confident in expressing himself in such a permanent way. Because he has to let everybody know that he's confident. Because a real confident man lets everybody know. Responding, When I'm older, I'm probably going to hang out with other badass tattoo dudes and generally look awesome. What are you going to do when you just look like every other old person? What an asshole. Oh, yeah. We hang out with other dudes. Yeah. I hate men. Oh, my God. Yeah. Drinking my dark beer that tastes like shit, but I got to be manly and have the very brown beer in that big jug. Yeah. And I like big jugs. Fans love Travis's candid dunk, and it should come as no surprise. The Blink-182 drummer has been adding ink on ink for decades. Yeah, he's so cool. The way he gets tattoos on a body that if he dies in 40 years, will be gone in 42 years. Oh, it's so important. And he isn't slowing down. Yeah. Over the weekend, Travis showed off his newest work from Canadian tattoo artist Steve Weeby. And it does, Weeby. And it doesn't even look that good. Weeby. Travis may be a bona fide tattoo expert, but he's also up for trying a more conventional look when the time is right. What, by getting your body cleaned up? What a douche. Oh yeah, me and other tattooed men, we cheat on our wives and drink dark beer. Oh God. I'm sure Chloe's, or uh, Courtney, I'm sure Chloe's been with Travis too. Let's be real here. (laughs) But I'm sure Courtney is totally with him for that riveting personality. Baby's first steps. Boring! Oh, I, I can't. I, my life is too short. I can't do this. The video says LeBron James' youngest son dunks for first time. Bad, proud, cool. But this TMZ guy, man, some people talk about other people having anno- annoying voices. He might have the most annoying voice of all time. Also, let's see how much the TMZ announcers in this, because this headline, I love this. This is TMZ trying to help out their buddies. So are you an ice cream or a gelato? All right, I can't do it either. Man, they, their voice got worse over time. Maybe it's just because it's very LA. Oh, my God. I mean, this overpriced dump of a machete that once was cool because everybody thought that LA was cool and that Hollywood was a bunch of role models. So we talk like this. And we're all missionary queens. The video says, John Legend shares gelato order with TMZ Tour. Oh, he's such a good guy. And his wife is totally not a pretentious 
Insert word here. Oh, he shared his gelato and bought gelato for people on a TMZ tour. That's totally not a publicity stunt. Chrissy Teigen celebrated her 36th birthday with a big day. She went to the Hotel Bel Air with John, and there's pictures of them kissing. Then she did a photo shoot that was like a pillow fight sort of thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Living up my midlife crisis. Thinking about when I was a kid growing up that I thought was cool, but everyone talked behind my back. Pretty much the same way she lives now. She had a birthday party at night, and the entertainment made it officially the worst birthday party ever because they had a private ballet performance. Does sound pretty awful. Going to the ballet and hanging out with Chrissy Teigen? Gross. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour will be right back. Oh, yeah. I had my mic off. This file, that might have been the best radio ever. When my mic is off, might be the best radio ever. Okay. This following segment was brought to you by WestChasePrinting.com and WestChasePrinting and also DJ Tone Tampa on Instagram. When I tell you that they are the best in the Bay, I am a man of my words. I would not lie to you. Go to WestChasePrinting.com. Posters, yard signs, business cards, whatever the hell you need printed up, West Chase Printing will hook you up. And when you get that invoice, if you had not heard this live read, they were already going to hook you up with a great deal, but because you name dropped me and you said that I sent you, Tone will hook you up with a great deal. Happy hour. Happy hour. He never holds back. And he speaks his mind. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. Call Hoppy now. 856-49-HOPPY. Finally, I'm one of those guys who can't wait to get to work in the morning. Like a dairy Why? cow. Oh! Oh! Oh, yes! Yes! Oh! Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. The other stations are tuned in too. why this sound effect reminds me of madonna even though i had to look it up personally so it does remind me of madonna i'm just setting up a bit let's run a train yeah madonna is like a good 2004 camry that you keep souping up coop it up not souping up man i know nothing about cars you get some nice tires get some nice speakers and you really make the most out of the ex experience of being inside of it but either way you put it it's kind of old you know what i'm saying <laughs> i just imagine she'd be a delightful time don't mess with the material girl <laughs> 50 Cent has apologized after Madonna called him out for making fun of a recent photo shoot in which she posed in lingerie. Man, this is the most 2021 headline ever. 2003, 50 Cent would be like, I gotta bang her out and have sex with her. Now he's like, I'm sorry. In an apparently now deleted Instagram post earlier this week. Oh, he's such a tough guy. 50 Cent bowing down to a Madonna. He's so cool, bro. Bring back your vitamin water. The rapper took a shot at Madge's racy snaps, reportedly writing, quote, That's Madonna under the bed trying to do like a virgin at 63. She's shot out if she don't get her old ass up. She's also been run out a lot. Madonna caught wind of the diss and responded with a swipe of her own, posting a photo of her and 50 smiling together on TRL back in the 2000s, sharing her disappointment to see the rapper resort to what she believes is petty drama. She should have... Uh I guess maybe when they hooked up, I'm just guessing they've hooked up. I just 
that I was going to say that she should post a selfie, but I feel like if they did hook up, it was pre selfie era. I just get the vibe that 50 Cent has just been all in that. Writing Here is 50 Cent pretending to be my friend. Now you have decided to talk smack about me. Oh, Madonna, you've never talked about anybody else. You've been such a perfect angel. I guess your new career is getting attention by trying to humiliate others on social media. What do you do then? What are you? The least elevated choice you could make as an artist and an adult. Let's be real here. He hasn't been an artist since at least 09. You're just jealous you won't look as good as me or have as much fun when you are my age. Oh yeah, I got plastic surgery. I'm so much better than you. I look like I'm 25, but my bones feel like I'm 65 because I am. Oh, I'm so cool. <laughs> Your move, 50. Instead of... Whatever. <sighs> Your move. Ignore her. Demi Lovato is going back to being fully sober. Why weren't you? I'm an addict, but I'm going to smoke weed. It's a good idea. And then make a show where I chase after ghosts. I'm so edgy. The 29-year-old singer revealed on their... Man, she is a rough 29. It's like looking at a really good looking pair of roadkill on the side of the road. Like you feel bad and you can see that the animal was cute, but you're like, man, it just never mind. Demi Lovato is going back to being fully sober. Yeah. The 29 year old singer revealed on their Instagram stories on Thursday that they would no longer be California sober. Right. I no longer support my California sober ways. Sober sober is the only way to be. So California sober means that you smoke weed, but you're sober. <laughs> it's called, I don't want to quit being an addict, but I want to pretend that I'm sober for my fans. Listen, she needs to just go away and never come back. She is just not good with the spotlight. I know that Joe Jonas kind of ruined her, but man. You got to fix yourself because I'm sick and tired of the millennials and Gen Z. Oh, I work hard. Oh, I do this. And I don't care what problems you have. Ian Beckles one time said it to me. He worked at the bone and did the five to 6 a.m. show. And I bored up from 11 to five. And this was the morning after my ex dumped me in 2018. And I said to him, how do you get over a breakup? And he's in the room half awake, getting ready for his show. And he goes, you just get over it. Everyone's going through shit. And that was like life-changing advice because everybody else kissed my ass after the breakup. Oh, you, you deserve better, which I do. I mean, I could only go up from that situation. There was really no more going down. Because uh, she quit going down. Uh, what I'm saying though is this. I lost my train of thought. I just got all creeped out. PTSD. Okay, here's what I'm saying. Ian Beckles was spot on when he said, you just get over it. And I have that mentality. I don't care what problems you have. I have problems too. Don't project it onto other people. In March, the confident singer revealed on CBS This Morning that at the time, they best identified with the term California sober. She identifies with a lot of things. I don't care what you identify as sexually. You can do whatever you want. Gender wise, I don't care. When literally every sober person says not to smoke weed, but she's like, I'm the first one to identify as California sober. Shut up. Which is used to describe Shut someone who up. chooses to use marijuana but remains sober from alcohol. Demi's announcement comes one day after they commemorated the passing of their friend, Thomas I'm sorry Russell III, who died on his birthday from a drug overdose oh. in 2019. So then why are you doing drugs if your friend died? Oh, God. I can't, I can't, I can't do this with her. Her and Alec Baldwin might be the most unlikable celebrities. And also this asswipe. This morning, CNN anchor Chris Cuomo is out of a job and potentially in even more trouble. Yeah. And then here's what I hate is CNN acting like, oh, we got rid of him because we're doing the right thing. They should have got rid of him like in 2020. The guy gave off douchebag vibes when he got COVID, which I don't even know if he got COVID looking back. He's like, I'm having hallucinations. Nobody fucking had hallucinations on COVID. It was a 14 day hangover and you had muscle ache and your body felt like crap. No one was like, bro, I'm seeing light. It's like I'm on shrooms. And that fucking guy is acting on TV. Shut up. Accused today of serious sexual misconduct. This staffer worked with Cuomo at ABC. 
Ah, that sucks. I'm sorry. The new claim brought worst internship ever. Say the new claim brought to CNN last week, one day after it suspended the primetime host for failing to tell the truth about just how involved he was in crafting his brother Andrew's defense. When has he ever been truthful? Never in his sexual harassment scandal. The woman's attorney, Deborah Katz, saying, my client came forward at this time because she felt in sharing her story and related documentation, she could help protect other women. Hell yeah. I'm proud of you. Bring down that scumbag who makes every male he embarrasses the male gender that he probably claims to be proud of. You make us all look bad, you scumbag. A Cuomo spokesperson said these apparently anonymous allegations are not true. Yeah. And that Cuomo stands by his on-air statements about sexual harassment issues. Yeah. I have always cared very deeply what, about, about, about what? these issues. And this was back in March. And then you were covering it up in August. God, I hate him. Shut up. I mean, I know he's gone, but God, you're just a smarmy asswipe. And profoundly so. I bet your daughter's embarrassed that you're her father. She just likes you because you're a walking uh, Chuck book. Shut up. In firing Chris Cuomo over the weekend, yeah. CNN said in a statement, additional information has come to light. It is not clear if this allegation had a role in his firing. None of it did. They had to get rid of him. They tried to keep him around because the guy has some talent. I, I don't know why people liked watching him. But you can't hate on the game. People watched him. I don't know what he did. I didn't get it, but people watched him. So they wanted to keep him around as long as possible because he was a ratings grab. It's not, oh, all of a sudden CNN got integrity. They never had integrity. Attorney Katz also... CNN is like an STD. You know how there's like AIDS, and HPV, and it's like three letters? CNN is literally a TV herpes. Represents Charlotte Bennett, one of the 11... Let me rewind that. I was going off about herpes. Attorney Katz also represents Charlotte Bennett, one of the 11 women whose allegations against former Governor Cuomo led to his resignations. Allegations Andrew Cuomo denies. And then here's my thing too. So Andrew's a creeper on women. Chris is a creeper on women. How many... Of the Cuomo's since the beginning of time are creeps. It seems like it's a generational thing. Though CNN promoted the this brothers' relationship during the pandemic. Oh, they're such bros. They're bros. Chris Cuomo did not report on his brother's scandal. Yeah, he did not. He casually just didn't notice it. But in May admitted to being in strategy sessions to help him. It will not happen again. It and this was in May and then it happened again was a mistake whoops texts and transcripts made public last week by the new york <laughs> attorney general's office show just how much chris cuomo helped along with drafting statements and prepping his brother for a news conference yeah. the younger cuomo also reached out to journalists to see if other accusers were coming forward who cares if he's the younger brother he a looks the same age as his brother and b looks as awful and fake tan as his brother actions that cost Cuomo his job. Tweeting after his dismissal, this is not how I want my time at CNN to end. What a weird guy, man. But I have already told you why and how I helped my brother. All right, man. You look yourself in the mirror and just, whatever. Have you ever been so angry, so stressed out, Yeah. that all you want to do is hit someone? <laughs> what? Yeah, there's a guy in Turkey who will let you do that. As long I would literally look into the home life of every single person that goes to beat up somebody. Like, you're not someone I want to hang out with. As you pay him. Hassan Ghani calls himself a stress coach. Yeah. That's one way to put it. Or uh, finding evidence in an undercover cop for sociopaths that are going to commit future crimes. Yes. That's a real job, and Hassan has been doing it for 11 years. Yeah. Hassan has to strap on protective gear in case a client had a really stressful day. Oh, man. Wonder how many of them he bangs. He said he was inspired to incorporate this technique into his coaching yeah. by a movie where one of the characters beat up his boss when he got angry. That's weird, man. 
Machine Gun Kelly just revealed that he accidentally stabbed his hand with a knife near the beginning of his relationship with Megan Fox. Let's get into it. That's so edgy, bro. I cut myself. I hate my life. It seems like Machine Gun Kelly is taking Bloody Valentine literally. Yeah. MGK and Megan are clearly going strong, taking to social media on a near constant basis to flaunt their super loved up relationship. Ah, so he's just accidentally cutting himself. That's so cool, man. He's like us. Well, he was once like us. He literally grew up in, uh, in Cleveland. Common and Tiffany Haddish appear to be on good terms after their reported breakup. Why? How do you know? The actor and rapper wished Tiffany a happy birthday this week, just days after an insider told People Magazine that the couple had parted ways. Oh, that's good, man. He's just wishing his ex a happy birthday. He's a really good guy. He issued a public statement about his ex-wife. Oh, let's bow down to how good of a man he is. Tiffany turned 42 on December 3rd and got a she looks like she's 42. sweet shout out from Common, who posted a photo of her on Instagram alongside a heartfelt message of well wishes. Oh, that's good, man. Oh, they'll be banging next week. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour will be right back. Oh, yeah, this following segment. Do I have any sponsors left? Let me think here. I feel like I'm missing one. I feel like I'm not giving one the time of day. I think I should come prepared. Let me look at my list here. No, I did all of them. So I'll just say again, fitsagefitness.com, fit underscore sage underscore fitness on Instagram. Fitsagefitness.com. If you live in Tampa Bay, he can be your trainer. If you don't live in Tampa Bay, don't worry. Don't have a panic attack. You can do virtual workouts, but you got to make it happen, Captain, at fitsagefitness.com. Happy hour. Happy hour. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, this little guy. Buddy, if I had a peanut, I'd give it to you. I love you. I love you. Hey, who's got a peanut for turtle taste? Call Hoppy now. 856-49-HOPPY. Tweet at him at Ryan Hoppy Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Oh, yeah. Jussie Smollett says the attack was no hoax as actor reveals doing drugs and masturbating at a bathhouse. Who hasn't? With one of the Nigerian brothers who beat him up. Claims he paid siblings 3500 for health supplements. Jussie Smollett, 39, is charged with six counts of felony disorderly conduct for making what prosecutors say was a false police report about the alleged attack. What a loser, man. Like, you weren't the big name on Empire, so you had to make up the, oh, these Trump supporters beat me up in negative 10-degree weather. And then everybody who hated Trump just ran towards it without any common sense. It's just <laughs> dummies. And that's not me defending, like, Trump. I'm just saying, like, everybody was so quick to just find any reason to hate Trump that they were like, oh, yeah, these Trump supporters that don't really exist in Chicago just beat up this guy at 1 in the morning after he was getting Subway. Wow, that was weird. The Subway commercial was on ESPN just now. Coincidences freak me out. Oh, yeah, he's just a, a famous actor just going to Subway, kind of famous, on Wacker Drive at 1 in the morning when it's negative 10 degrees out. Douche. He says, in quote, there was no hoax. This was no hoax. They said if he's convicted, he will, li he will likely be placed on probation. Oh, so he'll be found innocent. Cool. Whatever. I'm done. Aaron Carter back together with Melanie after Child Protective Services call. And that sounds delightful. Aaron Carter is back to square one with his baby mama, trying to patch things up after a dramatic weekend, which included a call to Child Protective Services. I feel like 
he goes to square one a lot. I feel like he probably means well deep down and he messes up and then he, like, let's say it like, keeps improving and then goes back to square one. Kind of like his music career. <laughs> yeah, I don't really want to talk about that. It's kind of depressing. The poor kid has to live with the fact that he is their father. Yeah. This one was weird and I don't really care. Drake withdraws from Grammy Awards. I feel like Drake wants to be really low key after what happened at the Travis Scott festival. So he doesn't want any attention. So he's trying to be forgotten about for a minute so he can come back. That or he's busy sending a text to 16 year old girls. Happy hour. Happy hour. Live from Tampa Bay, you are tuned in to Happy Hour. Whoa, hey. <laughs> Oh, hey, hey, it's, uh, I mean, it's like a koala bear crapped a rainbow in my brain. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in, too. Oh, happy Hot Topic! Tonight, Antonio Brown suspended by the NFL. It comes after a back-and-forth finger-pointing battle between the star NFL wide receiver and his former chef and employee who accused Brown of faking his COVID-19 vaccination card. Yeah, that's a disgruntled employee trying to rat somebody out. Like, you can hate somebody all you want, but man, there's like a bro code. The final word belonging to the NFL, which... You're just, kind of a rat. You're kind of a bitch. ...down the three-game suspension to Brown and two teammates after investigating whether the athletes, quote, misrepresented their vaccination status. None of the players are appealing the suspension, which will cost Brown about a million bucks. At first, his attorney vehemently denying the accusations of a fake card. I think we learned one thing on the show. Attorneys deny a lot. The NFL and the NFL Players Association. Yeah. And now he really sounds like a lawyer for an NFL player. <laughs> NFL and the NFL Players Association. Yeah. Now have drawn a line in the sand. Oh, cool. If you use a fake vaccination card, you are suspended three games. No okay. questions asked. Got it. The punishment coming after the Tampa Bay Buccaneers initially said they'd received vaccination cards from all players and that no irregularities were observed. Here's my thing. I don't even need to play any more of it. I don't care that much. Here's my thing. How are you going to suspend Antonio Brown for faking a card, but then Aaron Rodgers lies about getting the shot and he gets away with it? It's literally the definition of white privilege. Also, they need Aaron Rodgers to be on the team because Jordan Love's not ready to lead it and they make money off of the Packers. They're not making that much money off of Antonio Brown. Like if Tom Brady did this, they wouldn't have suspended Tom Brady. You know what I'm saying? Like Antonio Brown's great. He might be a Hall of Famer. He's legit. But he's not like the face of a franchise, so him being gone isn't really hurting the Buccaneers like money-wise. But like if Aaron Rodgers were to be suspended, they would like, you know, uh, go down and they would lose revenue. Like the NFL's suspensions make no sense. It's just confusing. It's like they were harder on deflate gate inflating balls than they were on Ben Roethlisberger. Man, if Ben Roethlisberger retires this year, man, people are going to... I'm wondering if they're going to dig up that case from 2010. It's time for him to be canceled. God, he's a creep. Hey, guys, it's Allie for Hollywood Life with your news in entertainment, and we're going to start this one off with Adele and marriage. During an interview with Sirius XM, the Easy On Me singer revealed that despite making a whole album about divorce, she is open to being married again. God, just go away. <laughs> Shut up. Adele also added that her time being married was the safest feeling she ever had in her life. And yeah, because you weren't in the public spotlight trying to let us all know, I'm okay with my divorce. I'm overcompensating. I'm okay. I'm okay. Shut up. She misses it. Recall the UK singer was previously married to Simon Konecki and they share a nine-year-old kid. Mm. Since her divorce was finalized earlier this year, Adele has publicly moved on with sports agent Rich Paul and seems happier than ever. Oh yeah, when you have to let us know that you're happy, oh, you're really happy. 
All right, but switching gears. Because really happy people have to let us know they're happy. A bit to a not so happy couple. <gasps> Grimes released a new breakup song titled Player of Games, and she's not holding back. The singer seemingly shaded her ex, Elon Musk, in the song with the lyrics, I'm in love with the greatest gamer, but he'll always love the game more than he loves me. Yeah, the guy's got Asperger's. I don't know if he's able to feel love. Also, here's the thing. Why is everybody supporting Grimes for recording a song about her ex? Taylor Swift does it, and everybody bows down to her. But when Shawn Mendes makes a breakup song, oh, he's a terrible man. Shut up. What? I can't, I can't take it. You might remember the Tesla founder was once an aspiring video game designer. Oh, and cool. CNET reports that he created his first shooter called Blast Star at the age of 12. Mm. Well, Grimes and Elon announced their breakup back in September after dating for three years. And based on the song, there's still some unspoken feelings. Oh, but when Sean does it, oh, burn in hell when Grimes does it. You're such an angel. Okay, but now on to Zendaya and Tom Holland because these two are red carpet official. Ah, uh, it's when it really matters. Oh, they're on the red carpet. We didn't see their fight in the car, but oh, they posed for two minutes on the red carpet. Oh, you're so cool. All right, whatever. This next headline is just, you're trying so hard to be edgelords. No, not a Reddit commenter. Megan Fox and Machine Gun Kelly. It's weird because I hung out with Machine Gun Kelly for like an hour when I worked in Cleveland Radio and he's a laid back dude. Now he's doing this. Megan Fox and Machine Gun Kelly definitely know how to make a fashion statement. How? The couple attended the Bloody Valentine Singer's unisex nail polish line launch in Los Angeles over the weekend. And they paired- He went from like being a Cleveland ghetto rapper to, I got nail polish. What? And they paired their all black ensemble with an eye catching accessory, a chain that connected them by the nails on their pinky fingers. Why? Cause you're whipped. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour is now over. Happy hour is now over. Happy hour is now over. Money. And like that, 